Hello, and welcome to the System Surveyor on-demand training video. Today, we're going to talk about three different things. One, an overview of System Surveyor 2.0 uh, app on the mobile tablet. Two is an overview of System Surveyor uh, access from the web. And three is going to go over collaboration and guest users. But first, let's get started with, with what is System Surveyor? System Surveyor is a leading software platform for site surveys and system design and lifecycle management. The components of System Surveyor is a cloud-based web application, a companion mobile tablet app that both allow easy sync from field to office. As you can see here, so the so 2.0 mobile tablet app is available on the Apple Store, on the Apple Store, on Google Play, as well as Microsoft with a few Microsoft imposed restrictions. Here we have a diagram that shows exactly how how seamless it is to create surveys in the field via the mobile tablet app, sync those to our AWS-based cloud so software platform, and then access those same surveys that you did in the field via web browser, either at your office or from your home. Now let's jump into System Surveyor 2.0 tablet app. When you first sign into the System Surveyor 2.0 app, this is the screen that you will see. This is your workbench where you have your favorite sites as well as all sites. To add sites to your favorites, you simply need to tap the star next to the associated site and that site will then appear on your favorites. As you can see here, there's the site that I favorited and now it appears on my favorites. So I no longer need to go through all my sites. Let's start with creating a site. You'll tap that plus button in the bottom right hand corner, then hit new site. This is where you can give your site a name. You can fill in an address as well as select, if you're on multiple teams, select which team this site is going to be on. And to do that, you just tap where it says teams and I can select the team that I want that site to appear on. I hit OK. I've now created that site. It'll take me into that site where I can now create a survey. To create a survey, you just hit the plus button in the bottom right hand corner, hit new survey. And from here, this will now show ex the different way, the five different ways that you can create import a floor plan on the 2.0 tablet app. First, you have photo gallery, which allows you to select a photo from your tablet's photos app. Camera allows you to take a picture of something and use that as your floor plan. Satellite image allows you to search Google Map for a location and use that as your floor plan. Local files allows you to select from the local file storage on your tablet, as well as if you have any cloud-based storage softwares that you are using and they're connected to your tablet, you can pull those up. As you see here, I could pull up my Google Drive or my Dropbox. And then of course we have quick start, which gives you a blank canvas to start with. I'll go ahead and use photo gallery here, pull up one of my floor plans. Once you select your floor plan, you'll be taken to this screen here where you can crop your floor plan as well as rotate it if you need to. Once you have it cropped and rotated to exactly what you're looking for, go ahead and hit next and that will take you to the screen to set your scale. The scale is going to be very important for the area of coverage as well as cabling that you may use during your survey. So you want to make sure it's accurate. And it can be as small or as big, just you just need to know the measurement. Once you know it, you can set it here or type it in. From this screen, you can also change the element icon size. So I'll make these a little bit bigger. Once you have everything set to exactly what you what, what you'd like, Go ahead and hit next. Then you can give your survey a name. I'll go ahead and keep system surveyor overview. And of course I'll add today's date. Once we have the date in, you can then put in an address, give it a description or choose. If you have folders that you created, you can select one of your folders. Now we'll go ahead and hit next and then start editing. Now that we're editing, we can begin placing elements on the survey via drag and drop. But first, as you can see, we have multiple different system types, each with their own elements inside of them. 
And we also have the ability to search through our elements on the system search 2.0 mobile or tablet app. So I can say camera, and then when I open it up, it's only gonna show me the cameras. So it makes it very easy and very much quicker to find the exact element you're looking for. Now it is just a drag and drop, so I can just drag this over, drop it right where I want it. And once you drop cameras, that is going to then open up the area of coverage for them. So now we can just manipulate that using the, the cross of arrows and the, the black arrows that you see on the side are just to change the width. You can also change the area of coverage using the toolbar that you see in the, at the top of the screen. You can select from preset degrees as well as type in a manual distance. This is also where you can change the color of that area of coverage. So I can make that orange if I'd like, or just put it back to yellow. Once you're done, you can hit that X to close out that toolbar and get into the element toolbar. Here, you will see a pencil, which allows you to access the element uh, attributes where you can see add in files and photos. You can go to the name, installation tab, similar that you would on our previous app, except it's all on that left-hand side of the screen so you can still see the survey itself. You can just scroll through or select a specific section to navigate and put in that information. If you were looking to attach a photo to an element, you can either tap that camera on that element toolbar or tap the camera in files and photos. Once you tap that, it'll bring up your, it'll ask you for access to your tablet's camera if you haven't already given it. Once you give it, you can go ahead and take a picture, hit use photo, and here this will take you to the annotations for the photo tool where you can now drag and drop an actual element onto the photo to show exactly where you're wanting that element to place as well as you can free draw annotations or just like before add in text box add in squares whatever you need for that annotation one thing to note that's new is the ability to both solid fill and change the opacity of the uh, annotations that you add as well as changing the density of the line. So now that we have that set exactly how we want it, we can hit save. Now that it's saving, it's going to attach that image directly to the element that we had placed once it finishes processing. So as you can see, we have that element placed exactly on the, uh, we have that photo attached to that element. So now we don't have to worry about going back and forth or trying to remember where that photo belongs when we get back to our truck. Another thing I wanna show is our containers. So if I take this single door and if we zoom in, you can tell it's a container because it has that slight border, but containers just means we can drag and drop other elements into the initial container to create what we call sub elements. So I can add in anything that I might need for this door. And then to access those, once again, I can just hit that pencil to get into the element info. And from here, because it's a container, I also have a drop down to select the sub elements. So I don't have to worry about going in and selecting those manually. I can just use this drop down menu here. And the duplicate button is still, you still have that capability on the tablet app as well. All we have to do is push that button there, the two papers, and then we can duplicate our element. Another thing that I want to show was the same button, which is just right there. Then you do have the ability to export this via PDF by clicking the three dots in the upper right-hand corner, which is also where you can reset your scale, crop those floor plan or replace the floor plan and change the element icon size. But if you hit export as PDF, what you'll get is this little tablet menu where you can send it, send that PDF in an email as a uh, text message to someone, save it to your tablet's files, save it to Dropbox if you have that connected. So it makes it very easy to share your floor plan. Once we're done, we do have an auto sync feature on the 2.0 tablet app. So when I back out, as you'll see, it's in queue to upload without me having to push any button. And now it's uploading, it says synced. It's gonna give it a little download. Now we're all set. So now let's switch over to 
the web app and see talk about the things that you can do there. So now here we are on the system surveyor web app, where if we need to get access to the site, the, both the site and the server that we just created on our tablet, because it did sync, we can just go ahead and refresh. There's that site that we created. So we can hop right in. And there's the survey that we created. So now that we have that survey, we can go ahead and continue editing. one thing that we have available on the web is when you do place cameras on the web as opposed to the system surveyor 2.0 tablet app we get our camera advisor the camera advisor is great to give you sort of recommendations on how powerful that camera needs to be to do a specific job so here let's say we want a general surveillance as you can see the required resolution is just sd size vga but as we move through these are going to be bigger and bigger as we decide between whether we want general surveillance, detection, recognition, or identification. And this will also change as you make the area of coverage bigger, it changes what's required for each level. From here, you can just hit done or go into attributes. Another thing that you have once you've uploaded your survey to the web app, to our cloud platform, you hit comments and you can add comments to your survey as well as at people that you're working with to let them know, hey, let's take a look. at Cam 2. And if they have their notifications on, they will get an email notification letting them know that they've been mentioned in a comment so they can come in and check it out right away. Another thing I want to show is going to be the cable paths, which we have a regular cable path. So you can go up and down, left and right. And we have our flex cable path. The difference is going to be that with the flex cable path, as I connect this to where it may possibly go, and I start moving these points, these little blue squares that pop up, that just gives me more and more points to manipulate this cable path. So that's one of the great things about our flex cable path and the main difference between the two. Another great thing is if on your, you're on our scale plan or above, when you go to the functional tab, you will get an estimated measurement for that cable path. Now we'll save this and take a look at some of the reporting that you can do on the web app. So of course we have our classic reports, which allow you to select from different options here and build out a PDF, and you can also select which system types you want to use, what install status, and whether or not to include your annotations. We have our enhanced reports, which allows you to select from a few different reports here. And then you also, once again, do get to select what system types. We have our Excel reports, which, as stated, are available, um, which, as stated, they do export to Excel and Excel files but these are only available on our scale and above plans. So now let's back out to the site dashboard, which is gonna be this screen here. And let's talk about contacts and guests. The so contacts is a way to just add someone in that may be related to the project, but it's not necessarily a user. So that way you can have their email on hand. Maybe it's a client, maybe it's a subcontractor, but to get them in, you just hit new, add in their first name, last name, and email address. And let's say maybe there's someone that's a part of the project, but you want to add them as a guest and have them come in and you know maybe make changes or be able to look at things in System Surveyor. You just toggle this switch to invite them as a guest and you can give them edit, which will, as, as it says, allow them to edit surveys or read only, which allows them to just look at different surveys on the site. And then you can set that expiration date. So once again, Without that button toggled on, they're just invited as a contact. They're just sort of just a reference list of who is associated with the project outside of your system server account. But you can toggle this on and invite them as a guest. A 
another thing that we want to show on the web is how to invite your users. So to do that, you go to sites, to get back to your workbench here, click the profile in the upper left-hand corner, go to manage teams. This should open up on the users section and you can just click invite to invite your team members. All you need is to put in their emails and you can then assign roles. So if you do add multiple people, you can assign multiple people a role. Maybe you want to add them as team members at first and then come back in and change them later, which you can do. Uh, the roles that we do have, as you can see here, are account admin, team admin, team member with InfoMask, and just a regular team member. If you wanted to see a in-depth look at what each of these roles can do, we do have role descriptions on this screen so you can select and take a look so you can choose the right role for your team members. But let's say you add most, maybe four or five of your team members as just team members, uh, just to get them in the system. You can always come back in later once they're added in and select the three dots here, assign role and change their role to be exactly a role that's gonna fit uh, what they need to be able to do within System Surveyor. Last but not least, I want to show you how to share a site with someone. So to share a site, you go back to your site list or your workbench here, hit the three dots, and this will be able to, you'll be able to send a link to someone. So as you can see, I can enter the email, send an expiration date, as well as a little message. And that's gonna wrap up our video today, but just to summarize here, just a summary and a quick reminder that System, System Surveyor's Tablet app is a very powerful tool when you're in the field for capturing information, photos, et cetera, as well as uh, it makes it very easy to do that work and share things. Now let's hop back into that slideshow just as a quick reminder of where you can get the System Surveyor 2.0 app. So as I mentioned, we're back in the PowerPoint just to take a look that you can get the System Surveyor 2.0 app on both the Apple Store, the Apple App Store, the Google Play Store, and it is available from Microsoft with, of course, Microsoft imposed restrictions. For more information, you can always visit our resource center. And remember, we, you, we do have, of course, Systems Surveyor Classic that we have available on, on the App Store, but we are, we are seeing most of our clients moving towards Systems Surveyor 2.0. So you may wanna just check that out just in case. And once again, just a reminder, the most important thing with Systems Surveyor is to get started using a floor plan, test out the drag and drops, and check out how some of the reports look. And once again, for more information, you can always visit our resource center. That's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your day.